The two famous writing style of the Holy Quran are Uthmani script and Indo-Pak script. We'll talk about the difference between these two scripts. Here on the right side you can see we have Indo-Pak script and in Indo-Pak script we have different color combination and also the writing style of Arabic letters is little change. Like that on the left side we have Uthmani script and we have different color combination and also the writing style of Arabic letters or little change. Now we'll talk about in detail. First of all we can talk about this alif in this word A'udhu. You can see the first letter is alif and it has fatha on the top and like that here ilahi. The first letter is alif and it has a kasra under the alif. If we are going to see the same word in Uthmani script so look at that here the first letter is alif and also letter hamza is written top of that and then we have fatha on the top this is a'udhu and same word here the first letter is alif and also letter hamza is written below that and then we have a kasra so this is the first difference about letter alif and now we'll see how we are going to explain that in Indo-Pak script when our letter alif has any sign on the top that time it acts like an hamza or simply we can say when letter alif has any sign on the top or below that that time it becomes hamza that's why here we are going to make the a sound and same thing in this word the first letter is alif and it has a kasra and here the sound becomes e in Uthmani script we are going to explain this thing whenever we see letter Hamza is written top of Alif letter Alif becomes silent so just we are going to make letter Hamza sound so it becomes A and the same thing here letter Alif is silent because letter Hamza is written at the bottom so just we are going to pronounce letter Hamza with Kasra it becomes E I hope you got it the next thing you can focus on this Alif here it's Birab bin Nas and just concentrate on this alif in the middle it's just written like that without, without without having any sign and like that here this alif in the beginning and here this alif and also here so the alif is written without having any sign but if we are going to see the same thing in North manuscript here you can see that letter alif and also it has a special sign on the top like that on the second line a letter alif has a special sign on the top this type of alif is called hamzatul wasl this type of alif remains silent whenever it's coming in the middle we are going to explain this thing in both script in a same way that here letter ba has a kasra this one we can consider as a sign and letter noon has a shadda sign on the top which is one of connecting sign all the letters which are coming between a sign and connecting sign they become silent like in this example alif and lam they are coming between a sign and connecting sign so they become silent the b is directly going to connect with noon the sound becomes bin same thing here the re is directly going to connect with lam this alif becomes silent because it's coming in the middle it becomes ril in the same way we are going to explain here in Uthmani script the b is directly going to connect with noon because letter alif and lam they are coming between a sign and connecting sign so simply we can say whenever hamzatul wasl is coming in the middle it becomes silent. Now the tricky part is when Hamzatul Wasl is coming in the beginning that time we are going to use that and sometime we give it Fatha and sometime we give it Kasra and also sometime we give it Dhamma. I'm going to show you some examples and you will get this thing clearly. In these three examples you can see that all these three ayahs starting with Hamzatul Wasl 
and also if you notice that there is no fatha or kasra or dhamma so this is the tricky part that how we are going to know which sign we have to give that and if you see the same examples in Indo-Pak script so here you can see that the fatha is written top of that so we can easily pronounce it becomes alhamdu and on the second example you can see the kasra is written under the alif so it becomes ihdi and here dhamma is written top of alif it becomes udru and in Uthmani script you can see there is no fatha kasra and dhamma so this is the tricky part now how we are going to know that which sign we have to give Hamzatul Wasl when we are going to use that for this we have to learn the rules of Hamzatul Wasl and I have made the separate video about that you can watch this video and also the link is given in the description so here it becomes Alhamdu we have to give it Fatha and here we have to give it Kasra so it becomes Ihdi Ihdina Sirat Al Mustaqim and here we have to give it dhamma so it becomes udru ila sabili let me show you another example here in this example the first word is yadkhuluna in indo pak script the long syllable what we have here this is lu you can see top of vow we have a sukun sign which is one of connecting sign and like that the next word fi and also di you can see top of letter ya we have a sukun sign here and also here top of ya we have a sukun sign if we are going to see the same word in Uthmani script look at that here this word is yadkhuluna and you can see top of letter vow we do not have a sukun sign the vow is just written like that and also top of letter ya yeah, you can see there is no sukun sign and after that on this letter ya yeah, you can see there is no sukun sign so we got it that in Uthmani script some signs are not written according to the writing style now let's see how we are going to explain these things in both script in indo Park script yad khulu the lu is a long sound whenever you see a letter has dhamma on the top and after that we have letter vow with sukun sign so we have to stretch the dhamma sound for two count that's why this syllable becomes lu and here the next syllable this is fi whenever you see a letter has kasra and if the next letter is ya with sukun sign so we have to stretch the fi sound for two count this one becomes fi and like that the next syllable letter dal has a kasra next letter is ya with sukun sign which means the kasra sound we have to make it for two count d it becomes d almost the same way we are going to explain in Uthmani script that whenever a letter has dhamma and if the next letter is wow so because of wow we are going to stretch the dhamma sound for two count the difference between them is top of wow there is no sukun sign in Uthmani script this one also becomes lu and the next one here we are going to explain it like when a letter has kasra and if the next letter is ya so because of ya we are going to stretch the kasra sound so it becomes fi and like that here this syllable it becomes the so these so these are the long sounds let's move to the next difference in these examples we have another difference let me show you in indo pak script the first word what we have here that is ma aghna now concentrate on this letter noon and the small vertical line what we have top of letter noon the small vertical line what we have here the name of this sign is standing fatha and the function of this sign is we are going to stretch the fatha sound for two count this is a long sound na like that and there is no sign top of letter ya 
which means letter ya is silent we are not going to pronounce that and here in this word ma luhu you can see we have a new sign top of this letter so this line what you can see basically that's letter ha and top of that the sign what you can see this one the name of this sign is standing dhamma and the function of this sign is we are going to stretch dhamma sound for two count this syllable becomes hu and in the second example the first letter is alif and there is a small vertical line under that the name of this sign is standing kasra and the function of this sign is we are going to stretch the kasra sound for two count the sound becomes e and the next letter lam it has a standing fatha on the top which means we have to stretch the la sound for two count the first two syllable becomes e la and then fihim e la fihim now if you are going to see these word and also hear the first word in Uthmani script so it's little bit change as you can see here ma aghna top of letter noon we have fatha and then a small vertical line like that this word ma luhu you can see we have letter ha also the letter ha is written in a different way and we have dhamma on the top and then here we have another sign like that if you notice this word letter alif under that we have letter hamza and then we have a new sign here i hope you got the difference now we are going to explain these word and you will get the difference clearly as we have explained in indo pak script that we are using these terminologies standing ha, standing kasra and standing dhamma these terminologies we are not using in uthmani script we have alternative signs for these terminologies in uthmani script let me explain the first word here ma al na here the small vertical line but you can see top of letter ya this is basically letter alif it's written in a very small shape that's why we are going to say small alif the function of small alif is we have to stretch the fatha sound for two count so letter noon has a fatha on the top so this na sound we have to make it long because of small alif and one more thing whenever you see the small alif is written top of letter ya that time letter ya becomes silent so we are not going to pronounce that so the first word becomes ma aghna na is for two count here in this word ma luhu the small shape what you can see here this is basically letter waw and it's written in a very small shape that's why we are going to say small waw and the function of this one is we have to stretch dhamma sound for two count as you can see letter ha has dhamma on the top it's hu and now we have to make it long because of small waw it becomes hu so this word is ma luhu and here in the second example a letter hamza has a kasra e and after that this thing which you can see that is basically letter ya and it's written in a very small shape that's why we are going to say this is small ya and the function of small ya is to stretch kasra sound for two count this syllable becomes e and the next one again the same thing letter lam has a fatha la and we have to make it long because of small alif this syllable becomes la for two count let me summarize that in indo pak script we are using standing fatha standing kasra and standing dhamma such type of terminologies in uthmani script we are using small alif small waw and small ya i hope you got the difference and if you want to learn more about small alif small waw and small ya you can watch this video the link is given in the description now let's take few more examples here in indo pak script you can see this word ma laun 
and you can see there is a Shadda sign top of wow but if you see in Uthmani script the same word you can see there is no Shadda sign written top of wow in the second example here in Indopark script you can see letter Noon has a Sukun sign on the top and like that the next letter is Ya and there is a Shadda sign on the top but if we are going to see the same word in Uthmani script you can see there is no Sukun sign top of Noon and like that there is no Shadda sign top of letter Ya another difference what we have here in the last word you can see we have letter Ya in the middle and top of that there is a Shadda sign and if we are going to check the same word in Uthmani script you can see the Ya is just written like that there is just Fatha on the top and no Shadda sign on the top I hope you got the difference now we can explain how we can pronounce these examples easily first of all we can talk about Indopark script because this is simple so here we have the first example the first word is ma lan and the next letter is wow and there is a shadda sign on the top which is one of connecting sign so it's simple that the lan sound is going to connect with wow because of connecting sign and the sound becomes long and also this sound we have to make it for two count with nasal sound so it becomes ma and then we can follow the next sign which is fatha so makes the, makes the wa sound ma wa adada in this way here in the second example the ma sound is connecting with noon it becomes man and then we have another connecting sign top of ya which is shadda which means this man sound completely going to connect with ya or we can say the man sound is going to merge with letter ya this noon becomes nasal sound and together we are going to pronounce mai and also we have to make the nasal sound for two count one more time we can pronounce this word and here in the last example letter ra has double fatha on the top which is run sound and now the next letter is ya it has a connecting sign on the top and it's simple that the run sound is going to connect with ya and we have to make the sound like rai and this sound we have to make it for two count with nasal sound khai rai yara in this way now we can talk about these examples in Uthmani script it's a little bit tricky but I'm going to explain that in a very easy way in the first example here this word is ma lan and the next letter is wow without having any connecting sign on the top the simple way we can explain that whenever you see letter wow is appearing in green color that time the previous sound is going to merge with letter wow automatically and the sound becomes ma and the same case with letter ya so this thing we have to keep in mind that whenever letter wow and ya they are coming after double fatha, double kasra, and double dhamma, so these sounds automatically going to connect with letter wow and ya. I hope you got it. So this one becomes ma wa adada. Just we have to remember this thing that whenever letter wow and ya they are coming after double fatha, double kasra, and double dhamma, that time these sounds automatically going to connect with wow and ya with nasal sound for two count like that the next example what we have here fa man originally there is a sukun sign top of noon this syllable is man now the next letter ya is coming which is appearing in green color so by checking the color by checking the color we know that the man sound is going to connect with ya this sound becomes mai and in case if you are not following the color coded version that time just remember that this is man sound and also we can write down man in this way so after such type of sound if the next letter ya is coming or wow is coming so the sound is automatically going to connect with letter ya the sound becomes mai 
فَمَن يَعْمَلْ In this way we are going to pronounce And here the same case Letter Ra has Fathatain Or we can say double Fatha And the next letter Ya is coming Which means the run sound Automatically going to connect with Ya With nasal sound And the sound becomes Khairai In this way And then we are going to follow the next sign Which is Fatha so Which makes the Ya sound Khairai Yara And if you want to learn more details about such type of examples, you can watch this video. I have explained all the details related to these examples in this video. The link is also given in the description. You can check that after watching this video. Let me show you some more examples. Here in the first example in Indopark script, you can see there is a Sukun sign top of letter Noon. And like that, if you are going to check in Indopark script, there is no Sukun sign top of letter Noon. Now let's see how we are going to explain that. According to color-coded version, whenever you see in Indopark script, the Noon is appearing in pink color, that time we have to hide the sound of Noon. So this one becomes Man Obviously this is Man and we have to apply another rule which is called by applying this rule we have to make the nasal sound for two count and the sound becomes and this thing we can explain very easily in Uthmani script that whenever you see letter Noon is written without having a Sukun sign that time we have to hide the sound of Noon so this one becomes or if you are following the color coded version so whenever you see the noon is appearing in green color that time we have to hide the sound of noon in the second example ذَلِكَ أَلَّمْ يَكُرْ رَبُّكَ here you can see the sukun sign is written top of noon and like that here again we have the same thing top of noon we have a sukun sign but if we are going to see in Uthmani script you can see there is no sukun sign top of noon now let's see how we are going to explain these examples. In Indopark script, whenever you see the first letter has a Sukun sign and the next letter has a Shadda sign, obviously both are the connecting sign. And the Shadda sign is more powerful than Sukun sign. Here we have the A sound and this A sound is directly going to connect with a second connecting sign because the second connecting sign is more powerful here in this example letter known becomes silent the sound becomes al the a is directly going to connect with lam it becomes al lam and the same thing we have to apply here you can see letter kaf has dhamma on the top which is ku sound and the next letter noon has a connecting sign which is sukun and after that we have letter ra it has a Shadda sign on the top so the Shadda is more powerful than Sukun sign which means the Ku is directly going to connect with Ra here the sound becomes Kur the Noon is silent here too now we can read that that is ذَلِكَ أَلَّمْ يَكُرْ رَبُّكَ and also we can easily explain in Uthmani script that this Noon is silent so here the A sound is directly going to connect with Lam it becomes Al and like that the Ku is directly going to connect with Ra it becomes Kur the third example what we have first of all we can check the difference in these two scripts and then we can explain how we are going to pronounce that so in the third example you can see letter Dad has a Fathatain on the top and then the tiny meme is written after that and here we have Fathatain but if you are going to see in Uthmani script, you can see top of letter Dad, we have just Fatha and after that we have a tiny meme. Like that in the fourth example, top of letter meme, here we have Dhammatain and after that we have a letter meme written in a small shape. If we are going to check the same example in Uthmani script, so top of letter meme, we have just Dhamma and after that we have small meme this is the difference between writing styles now let's see how we are going to explain these examples in both scripts 
so here we can say this is one and then the small meme is written after that which means we are going to convert the sound of noon into meme with nasal sound it becomes bima and like that here in this example sum mun it's mun and now the tiny meme is written after that which means the sound of noon we are going to convert into meme with nasal sound it becomes sum mum and this thing we can explain in Uthmani script in a very simple way that here you can see letter dad has fatha which is da sound and now this da sound is going to connect with that tiny meme with nasal sound ba dam bima the same way we have to pronounce just the writing style is little bit changed the same thing here we have top of letter meme we have just dhamma this mu sound is going to connect with that tiny meme with nasal sound and this sound we have to make it for two count sum mum book mun in this way the four examples what we have discussed here we are applying the rules of noon sakina and tanween in these examples so if you want to learn all the rules of noon sakina and tanween with complete detail in a very simple way so you can watch this video and inshallah everything will be clear and you can pronounce these examples very easily because all these examples related to the rules of noon sakina and tanween if you are good in in these rules so obviously you can pronounce these examples properly without doing any mistake now also we can take few more examples where, where we have the minor difference between these scripts so here another example we have let's see what is the difference in this example we have you can see here this word alayhim top of meme the sukun sign is written and here top of meme there is no sukun sign if we are going to explain that in a simple way we can say that the he sound is directly going to connect with the second meme and we have to make him sound for two count alayhim and like that here the he sound we can say it's directly going to connect with the second meme and the meme has shadda sign so we have to make the sound for two count him sound we have to stretch little bit it becomes alayhim in this way obviously we are applying one of the rule of meme sakina here and uh, we'll talk about this rule in detail in a separate video inshallah these examples are really tricky and we have to learn about that because there are more chances to do the mistake let me show you the difference here this word you can see ada there is a fatha top of letter dal ada and then you can see a tiny noon is written top of that with kasra which is ni sound so we are going to pronounce that ada and this ni sound is going to connect with lam it becomes adanil this is simple in indo pak script because the ni sound is written here and this ni is directly going to connect with lam so we can easily pronounce such type of examples in indo pak script it becomes adanil like that in the second example if you see this word is khaira there is a fatha top of letter ra and after that small noon with kasra which is the ni sound this ni sound is going to connect with lam it becomes khairanil but if you are going to see these examples in uthmani script you can see here top of letter dal we have fathatain double fatha is written the noon is not there so might be we are going to pronounce it like adan or uh, the da sound we are connecting with lam so we can pronounce it like adal so this pronunciation is not right here in these examples we have to express the hidden noon and we have to give it a kasra so then it becomes adanil like that here in the second example in indo pak script if you notice it's khai and top of letter ra double fatha it's run might be someone is going to pronounce like ral connecting the ra sound directly with lam as we normally do in other examples 
So this pronunciation is not right here in this example. We have to express the hidden noon and then we are going to give it a kasra, then it becomes ni. Then we are going to pronounce khayranil. So if you are following Uthmani script, so such type of examples will become really tricky. So we have to learn these rules and regulation. I have made a separate video about such type of examples where I have explained these rules in detail. So you can watch this video. After watching this video, everything, every, everything will be clear and all the doubts regarding these examples will be clear and you will be able to read such type of examples easily without any mistake. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and see you in the next video.